Hey guys, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use the Uniprot website to search for your protein sequences for the third part of your BLAST lab. And I'm also going to walk you through some potential pitfalls and things to look out for when you're generating your phylogeny that hopefully will be helpful. First we're going to start out with you guys have an open-ended lab in terms of what gene you want to pick and what organisms you want to use to construct your phylogeny. And to start out, you need to pick a gene. And we want to try to think of a gene, whether it's plants or animals, that is highly conserved. You know, think about what we've talked about this year. What gene would be highly conserved among a wide range of organisms that might be really important? We looked at the MC1R gene. We've seen how conserved that one is. You know, we might think of other housekeeping genes in cells that do things you ubiquitously across eukaryotes, like actin, uh, other, other housekeeping genes. Uh, I'm going to pick Rubisco, and, and we remember Rubisco from photosynthesis. And this is a Rubisco that is encoded in the chloroplast DNA. And there are other Rubisco subunits that are encoded in nuclear DNA. So we're going to the uh, Rubisco large chain. I'm going to just going to type in Rubisco into search and I'm going to hit enter and whew, 129,000 hits for Rubisco. So what I'm interested in is generating a phylogeny from the same gene. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to compare different, we, we've talked about how there are different genes within a gene family let's say and it wouldn't make a lot of sense and it wouldn't create a useful phylogeny if we use different genes. So one of the first columns we want to pay attention to is this gene name column. So I see RBCL. If I scroll down here and I see CBBO, I see RCA. So uh, right off the bat, um, when I'm looking at the organism column, I see different organisms. But one thing I want to pay particular attention to is what is that gene name? And of the genes that I pick, I want to make sure that they are of the same gene and not pick a variety of genes. That would not construct a good phylogeny. The other thing, there's a lot of information given here. The organism that this protein comes from and the length in terms of amino acid number in this column here. And I'm scrolling through here and I'm seeing a lot of those that are around 477, 475. I'm going to pick the RBCL gene, and um, I'm going to show you guys how you get the sequence information that you need and how you're going to take that um, and use it to create your phylogeny. First one at the top of the list is tobacco. And if I go over here to the entry, um, and I just, what I like to do while I'm doing this is open in a new tab. And that allows me to keep this search page open and go back to it. And once I do that, um, a new tab will open for the tobacco sequence. So this gene is found in tobacco chloroplast. How do I get to the sequence? Well, I go to format, and the format that we're going to be using is called FASTA format. I'm going to click on FASTA, and this is the nucleotide sequence. There's our methionine all the way down to the end. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and recommend you guys set up a document, which I've done over here, of all the sequences that I'm interested in. The goal is to copy and paste those sequences, starting here and making sure you copy everything there and paste it to the document. I've done that here. My first entry here that I pasted was this tobacco sequence. Um, you'll notice there's a bunch of gobbledygook up, up here that corresponds to the gene name and the organism it comes from. When we construct our phylogeny, we want to get rid of that and replace it with a simple name. Okay, I've already done that with all the other ones. So what I want to see on my phylogeny is not this, but I just want to see a simple name. So um, once we get all these in here, I'm just going to replace this with tobacco. Okay. The gist of this is uh, really paying attention to the gene name. Generating your own selection of organisms. Maybe you want to focus on uh, how different related groups are related to each other. So you may choose uh, three ones that you're 
thinking are closely related and compare them to distant relatives, I would recommend kind of choosing an outgroup um, that we said you know kind of helps root the root the tree and gives you a basis of comparison. Uh, one organism that may be most dissimilar than than all the others, and we'll talk about that in class as you're going through. But uh, just on this first page, I see wheat, I see Arabidopsis, which is kind of in the mustard family. I see rice, I see a unicellular uh, green alga called Clandidomonas, clammy for short, spinach, garden pea. So what I've done is, uh, in the interest of time, I've selected a range of these and I've pasted them into this document. Once you've selected all the ones that you want to generate a phylogenetic tree with, you will go to phylogeny.fr. And uh, this website looks like this. And we're going to do a one-click analysis. Um, so if we scroll down to the bottom, we'll see this one-click. We open that, and we get a window that looks like this. Okay, We'll just go into our document and go from the very, very beginning. Remember how finicky these things can be from our previous practice with an alignment? Uh, we want to make sure there's a single space in between. There's always this little right before each name. Make sure those are in there. Uh, highlight the entire sequence and copy and paste it into this window here. To uh, show you what I got for this, I'll skip ahead to the results. I got a pretty wonky tree. This is pretty hard to interpret. There's a suspicious thing going on here. My tree should not look like this. My first thought from experience is that I think I've got a, I think I've pasted a sequence in here that's not actually of the same gene for Rubisco. I think it's this Arabidopsis gene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure and go back to my uh, list here, and I'm going to make sure where did I get that Arabidopsis gene? This RCA one, and I, I meant to pick RBCL. Okay, so that can throw off your whole tree. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete this sequence, just get it out of there, and I'm going to copy and paste and try this again. Hopefully I can solve this problem. I'll go into phylogeny, FR, paste it in there. Let's see what happens um, when I have removed that suspicious sequence. Make sure all of my sequences are RBCL. Man, look at that. Okay, so we've got we've got a better looking tree here. So does this make sense? That will be a next my next question. You know, can you look at this arrangement? And see relationships that you know uh, reflect uh, something that makes sense. Again, remember every tree is a hypothesis. Uh, it's not necessarily true phylogeny, but uh, this is. We've got clammy demonis and liverwort and hornwort. These are not even vascular plants, so this grouping makes sense. Um, tobacco and tomato and potato are all in the deadly nightshade family. So seeing them closely related makes sense. And rice and wheat are both monocots. And pea is a dicot. Spinach is a dicot. Um, so just looking at this arrangement, this makes sense to me. And, and um, remember these numbers, what these mean is there's a high statistical confidence in the grouping. If you see this 0 0.99, 0 0.91. 0 0.033 is not statistically strong support for this clade. Okay, so everything attached here, there, there may be some errors here, so that's something you would want to interpret lightly. There may be a, a different arrangement here that's better. 0.62 is, is okay, it's not super strong. 0.85 is good. So the closer you are to one, uh, the higher the confidence of that clade. So anyway, this is just, I just wanted to give you a short tutorial, point out some possible pitfalls as you're doing this lab 